friends, welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Rick from the blog BI Gorilla. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all kinds of fun things you can do with list sort in Power Query. And actually it surprised me what kind of stuff you can achieve without helper columns. So let's dive right in. So list sort, everybody probably knows it because if you sort values, um, you get something similar with the table sort function. So list sort sorts the values within a list, just like table sort sorts the values within a table. Simple as that. But you can do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Let's have a look. I have all kinds of data sets on my screen here. So we're gonna just start with a few numbers here. On the screen, I actually juggled some numbers up here, just the numbers one to nine. Uh, with some extra steps. Now, by default, the list sort function has two arguments, and the first argument is mandatory, just like we're seeing now. Now, what happens here is that by default, the list sort function then sorts the values ascending. If you want to change that, you could write order ascending as a second parameter, or actually it's the other way around. It's order descending. Here we go. And then your values turn around. And like I just showed, the default is that the order of your values is ascending. So just like this. So if you just needed ascending, you don't need the second argument. Just like that. Easy enough. Okay, so that's the default. Now let's look on what that looks like if we go, for example, to null values. I'm still looking at some values one to three, but then with a the null value. And in this case, the null value is always sorted before the regular numbers because that's the way an ascending sorting works. But let's say you always want the null values at the end of the sorting. What can you do? So of course, one of the things that we just looked at was order descending, but then also your numbers are sorted descending and you might wanna keep it that way. So let's say you just wanna have the numbers ascending and the null value at the end. Well, one of the things you could do is provide your own criteria here. So instead of order ascending or descending, you can write your own formula here. So one thing I could suggest is to always start with the word each. That starts with, uh, it's a start for one of the functions that you, can, uh, that you can write. And then after writing each, you can say like each underscore, which is every of the underlying values in the list. And one of the fun things of null values is if you use the coalesce operator, then you can actually provide an alternative value to sort it with. So if you write two of these question marks, and I could, for example, say, I want to sort the null values as if it's the letter A. Now, the letter A is usually sorted later than numbers. So if I do this, you'll find that the numbers are sorted in the regular way. But at the moment that the sorting arrives at the null value here, it will say like, okay, for null values, I'm going to treat it as if it's the letter A. That's it. So that's pretty fun. Now, over here, you could still say that you want to have stuff ascending or descending. So I could still say, I'm going to open a grid bracket. And I need a second argument within this function. And I could then say, order descending. And then you close your curly brackets again. And now all of a sudden we have our null value first and the numbers actually go in a descending way. So that's pretty interesting as well. So that's the first examples I can give on how you can play with this. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next up, I have different letters. So if you look at letters, just like the list sort here, it sorts alphabetically by de default. And if we do order descending, we again can see how this turns around. Now, something funny happens, moving on to the next data set, something funny happens if you have numbers that are formatted as text. Because when you look at the screen, then over here you see the values 10 and 11, and 10 and 11 are actually bigger than two, three, and nine. But because they're formatted as text, it's gonna pretend in an alphabetical way, like the one comes first, and after one comes the two, so the order of the values might not be the order that you actually want to see it. But if that is the way that your, your data looks like, and you don't really feel like changing around the data types, then you can work with this. So the list sort function already has everything provided here. 
just like before, we're going to see if we can make a second argument and we're going to write each. And well, the easiest way to get this in the right sorting, just like a regular number, is to make sure it's treated as a regular number. And one of the ways to do that is to write number from. And then again, you reference the underscore, which references each of the items in the list. And then you click OK. And just like that, actually, your text values are now treated as if they're numbers just for the sorting, but the, the data type still stays in place. So that's a good thing. And again, over here, you can also do it in a descending way. So you can open up your curly brackets just like this. And you write a comma and then you can write order descending and you close your curly bracket. And now it's the other way around. Okay, so th those are already a few scenarios where things get useful. In the next one, we're looking at data where we have some capital letters and some lowercase letters. And when you look at an alphabetical sorting, then the, the, the uppercase letters, they're always sorted first, just like here. But I, it could very well be that you just want to sort the, the A's and the B's together. And you don't actually want to look at whether they're like uh, upper or lowercase. So again, we can add an argument and to treat them case insensitive, we could, for example, say each and then just say text lower. We reference the underscore and we have a look. And all of a sudden you can see that A, B, C, D is in the right order. And again, just like before, you can also have the order descending. And that's all still within the same list sort function. So I guess that's pretty nice. Okay, over here, we're looking at three different animals. We have a cow, a dog, and a ram. Now, if we sort these by default, they're sorted like cow, dog, and ram, because the first letter, actually all of the letters, but if you just look at the first letters, you're gonna find that uh, the C comes before the D, and the D comes before the R, and that's why it's ordered in that way. Now, it's really fun if you want to say like, okay, sure. But now instead, I would like to sort it by the last letter of the word. So you could write each text and, and you can just write the underscore and we want the last letter. There we go. And now if you look at an ascending sort order, the G comes first right there, then it's the M and then it's the W. And similarly, we could also use text middle to say like, hey, I wanna find the first value right there the starting number is the first one so i i actually said like okay the starting index is the first one so the the index always starts at zero and i tell it to go to the first one here so it's now sorting everything by a o o and again over here we can also do that in an order ascending or descending way so flexibility everywhere okay Another fun example, let's say we're working with the day names of the week. The day names of the week, they sort, of course, alphabetically if we don't know anything about it. So now we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they seem to sort in an okay way. But let's say I would add the Thursday here. Thursday, here we go. Then you actually find Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's not the desired sort order that you need. Now, the tricky part is we don't actually have an easy way to translate a Monday into the right order. Like there is, of course, a day number of the week, but so far I haven't actually seen a function that returns it. So in this case, I'm gonna show you how you can manually provide an order. So we're gonna go to the next line and we're gonna copy this entire list right there. And we need to provide it with a sort order so it knows in which order things need to come. So I could say list position off, then I provide the list that I need, but I need to put it in the right order. So I need to have Monday as the first one, and then Tuesday, of course, is the second one, Wednesday and Thursday. And to find the right sort order, the list sort function will take each of these values and try to find where it is in the list. So Wednesday is third, Tuesday second, Monday first, now, list position off still needs a second argument. So you write an underscore over here and you close the brackets. Uh, let's see. And I still need to write the each word 
in front of everything right there. Okay. So now I have sorted my, my list with the day names of the week in the order that I want to. And just like all the other examples, you can also do this in the opposite order and say like order descending and you close the bracket and you close that circle here. Let's see, I made a mistake here with too many brackets, but there we go. So as you can see, it's quite flexible how you can provide things. And if you don't actually have an order available, you can manually input this as well. Pretty cool. Now we don't always want to do this by hand. So if you know a function for this, it's much easier, but we can try that with the next one. So on the next page right here, I actually have um, the, the month names as text. And as you can see, they are not sorted in the right way because January is supposed to be first and April comes a little bit later, but alphabetically it's now ordered in an ascending way. Now be creative with how you want to sort things because there is an easy way to sort this. And that is of course with a second argument, but what you can do is write each. And now we're going to try and see if we can move this, uh, this month name. We're going to try to convert that to a date and dates of course, sort in a fun way, like in a chronological way. So something that I like doing is to say like, okay, each of the underscores, that's the value here. And I'm going to concatenate that with, you can grab a random year, but I'm just going to grab the year of this year, 2023. So this is going to return April, 2023, February, 2023. And that, that will still sort in the wrong way. Like, like you see now, nothing happens. And that is because April still comes first. But now knowing this, you can wrap this in a date from, and it's going to try to make a date from April, 2023 and February, etc. And now if I sort it, it actually knows automatically like, Hey, January is supposed to be first, because if you take a date from, and let me show this, if I take a, an extra step here and I write date from, and over here, I write January, 2023, then you'll find that it returns the first day of the month. So with the step that we just tried, it actually also used that to sort everything in the right way. Okay. We're going to have an additional challenge, which is a bit more challenging now. So here we go. So now we're looking at a list of dates, which I provided manually. And by default, the dates are ordered in the right way. So we see the 6th of January, we're looking at the Dutch formatting here. So day, month, and year. And then we're going to go to the 5th of February, 6th of February, 7th of February, and the 1st of May. Now you can play around with this. Let's say we want to order this not by, uh, by date, but by the day number of uh, the month. So we could write something like each date dot day underscore, and then we close our brackets. And all of a sudden it looks only at the day number from, uh, from the values here. And very similarly, you could also say, I want to sort it by the, the next value here, which is by the month. And all of a sudden you see the first, the second and the fifth. And now by chance, actually that is in the, in the right order. But let's say we have an additional requirement. So now instead of only sorting everything by month, which we've done here, after sorting things by month, we also want to sort these guys here, these dates, we want to sort those in a descending way based on the day number. So let's make this a little bit more fun and say, for example, that, um, that this 702, 7th of February was not in 2023, but it was in 2024. There we go. And we would like this. And then the fifth, for example, maybe the fifth as well. We turn this into a 24. Now, the fun thing is if you want to sort by multiple areas, you could say like, okay. I'm going to open two curly brackets and the first sorting you're going to do is by month. You close a curly bracket, then you open another curly bracket and you could say, now I want to sort things by each date day, by the day of the month. And you reference the underscore and then you close two brackets. 
Yes, that's the second one. And you close the list sort. Let's see, still need to close this one, right? Perfect. Okay, so what is happening right here now? So first I am sorting things by the month number. So it's one, two, five. Then I'm gonna sort it by the day. So it's like five, six, seven. Even though there is a year 2024, which is here, and then there's 2023 and 2024. So your sorting can be flexible there. But if that's not the way you want to sort it, but you actually want to do it by, by date afterwards, you could also then say like, okay, wait, I'm going to sort it by each underscore here, just by the date. And all of a sudden it will say the 6th of February, 2023, 5th and 7th. But maybe you don't want to do it in this way and you want to do it in the descending way. And you can change that around again. And all of a sudden you find that there is month one first and then month two. But the, the second sorting kicks in here when it says the 7th of February, 5th of February, and then it goes to the next one. Now, I'm sure that's a lot to take in. And uh, if this provides any value, please give me that like and uh, share the knowledge if you like. Uh, my blog has a lot of more examples which you can learn from and you can copy the code. So do that if you like. But I think this these little tricks are going to make your life a lot easier. I enjoyed them a lot. If you came up with a few that I don't know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn. And well, then uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. See ya. Uh -huh.